Hi, I'm Scott Harlig. I'm one of the owners of Amici Catering, along with my wife, Lori, and our chef, Miguel. And this week we are preparing hot meals for the Sojourner Center, the Banner Boswell Hospital, and the James Walton Veterans Home. Hey, Laura. Hi there. Hi. Hi, I'm Lori with Amici Catering. This week we're doing 200 already prepared meals uh, for local organizations. We are excited to be partnering with Fresh Food CoLab. We provide not only education for organizations on food recipes and healthy way of eating and using local resources, but we also are providing prepared meals that organizations can take and enjoy and feed to their residents or employees. So this has been really helpful. It works well for the community to join together and we're happy to do it. Absolutely. So we're going to give you a copy of the recipe of what we're making for 200 in here. It'll be smaller size that you can make it at home for your family. We hope you enjoy it. This week we are preparing uh, penne pasta with uh, meat sauce, but in addition, we'll have a side of uh, homemade roasted vegetables, yellow squash, zucchini, red bell pepper, and carrots, in addition to our homemade garlic bread, which is spectacular. We're beginning the, the process for our meat sauce. We're prepping carrots, diced onion, uh, diced celery, uh, bay leaves, a, a few other spices that'll be all mixed together and mixed in with our ground beef and sausage. So this is the vegetable prep that gets us started. We're currently slicing the carrots in order to dice them into a small dice. Uh, that cooks much more quickly when we mix it with our uh, olive oil and um, other spices. Um, so Miguel will cut a, a whole carrot into circles and then dice it into smaller pieces. Uh, so in addition to diced carrots, we're gonna be dicing celery in a small dice for our meat sauce. We usually make our recipes in, in gallon recipes, but since we have such a large amount of food that we're producing for this week, we're gonna make a larger recipe. We're starting with garlic puree. So in addition to the garlic puree, we're gonna have uh, bay leaves, whole bay leaves, and we'll pull those out of the recipe at the end. And then uh, we have uh, dry basil, dry oregano. We're cooking for 200 people today, but we're gonna provide a recipe in, in the near future that'll be scaled down to feed a family of six. And we add a crushed red pepper and we ground some fennel. It's, it's just a variety of different seasonings that help to bring out the flavor of the meat sauce. So when we were preparing the meat sauce today, we had previously cooked the ground beef earlier in the day. So that was already cooked when we mixed in. But typically you would heat up your oil, uh, throw in raw ground beef and raw Italian sausage and mix those all together and cook them uh, from a raw state. We do add a little bit of water since there's not a whole lot of oils that are coming off of the meats. Um, it helps to uh, just keep the product a little bit more moist. Our, uh, we mix our ground beef, which is an 80-20 count with uh, spicy Italian sausage. Uh, the two flavors uh, together give the meat sauce a really true, hearty kind of ragu taste. It's traditional in Italian cooking. Uh, we basically add additional fennel, as we mentioned earlier, in our spices just to enhance the flavor a little bit more, but there's quite a bit of fennel, crushed red pepper in the sausage that's brought out. We add a little uh, kosher salt to our mix of spices. In addition to the spices, the dry spices, we'll add in freshly cut carrot, uh, yellow onion, and diced celery. And all of those will slowly cook in and uh, again, add a flavor to the final meat sauce. We mix in all of the seasonings, the bay leaves, the crushed red pepper, oregano, basil. All of those things will cook slowly with all the meat and uh, create a nice hearty flavor. Our chef Miguel is mixing all of the ingredients for the meat sauce together. We had combined them earlier. And um, as you can see, the carrots and the celery and the onion have some vibrant colors. 
as they're currently cooking. The sausage and ground beef are being mixed together. Um, all the seasonings are being mixed in with uh, the meat. And it's just gonna slowly cook there for a while in order to make uh, the best meat sauce that we make. So when you are mixing the meat, you get all of the seasonings. You get a lot of the fennel, the oregano, uh, garlic, onion, all of those flavors are just melding right now. And it just uh, has an incredible, incredible scent. Make you very hungry. As uh, your ground beef and sausage, spices and vegetables start to finish up cooking, uh, we will take these items, pour them through a strainer in order to get off the additional liquid that's coming from the meat. Uh, we're also going to pull out the bay leaves that impart quite a bit of flavor, but not very fun to bite into. Um, and after that, we will add our prepared marinara to that mixture, uh, mix it around, let it simmer again a little bit longer to again impart all the flavors together. And then you will have a sauce that's ready for whatever pasta dish you have in mind. So our recipe for marinara actually comes from uh, Tuchetti restaurant where I used to be a managing partner. Um, basically they use Alta Cucina tomatoes. They're a whole peeled Roma tomato with uh, some fresh basil. They're a very high quality tomato. It's gonna make a little bit of a noise. Again, the recipe we're making today it's going to yield about four gallons, uh, which is more than a family could use in a short period of time. So we'll create a recipe for you that'll work better at home. After we open our cans of tomatoes, we'll add our seasonings that we use. Um, we uh, add sugar as the tomatoes can be a little um, tart sometimes. These little uh, softening of the tomato flavor. We also do salt. dry oregano, and black pepper. This is called a uh, burr mixer or stick blender. It's for larger containers like this five gallon container of marinara that we're going to have. Uh, you probably wouldn't want it something like this at your home, but many people have home versions that uh, just because basically makes it easier to puree things in a quick manner. So this would be a more viable immersion blender to use at your house compared to the original shot, which is what we use for a five gallon container of marinara sauce. They both work equally well. It's just a little bit easier to handle. So once we uh, mix our seasonings and sugar and salt in with our uh, whole peeled tomatoes, we're gonna use our large immersion blender and basically puree everything together. It's gonna be a little noisy. There you have it. It's nice and smooth, ready to be uh, mixed with our onions and garlic. Julienne some basil um, and mix it in with our marinara sauce. Um, it gives it additional flavor um, in addition to the other spices that we add to it. Um, so basically, once the tomatoes are pureed, we'll add the basil and then cook that slowly over a low heat. So we go ahead and add in some fresh basil to our marinara sauce. Just again to enhance the flavor a bit. What we have here are caramelized onions, uh, freshly uh, pureed garlic, all of them being heated together with extra virgin olive oil to make this nice flavorful blend that'll be mixed in with our pureed tomatoes for our marinara sauce. Uh, we let these go for probably about 20 to 30 minutes to get a nice color on them and uh, flavor and uh, scent and then we dump our tomatoes in and mix those together. So now we're adding the pureed tomatoes uh, in with the caramelized onion and garlic. And we're gonna let that simmer for a good hour at least, get all the flavors together. Typically sauces taste more flavorful the next day. So we are getting a little bit of a head on this for tomorrow's order. So Miguel is adding our homemade marinara into the meat and vegetable mixture. 
and this will be the final product of our meat sauce. Uh, we will let all of those flavors meld together for at least another hour, and then we'll have a fantastic meat ragu. It smells great, Miguel. Ragu is just another name for meat sauce, more traditional. We are preparing uh, roasted vegetables for our, our meals this week. It's a combination of zucchini, yellow squash, uh, carrots, and red bell pepper. Basically, we're going to roast those with, with olive oil, salt, and pepper, uh, and then those will be ready to go for our meals. So we basically are cutting our zucchini and yellow squash into quarters, kind of a nice sized piece like this. And they'll shrink up a little bit in the oven but um, it's good. And then with our yellow squash, very similar cut. You can really do it however you'd like. If you, if people like something smaller, um, this makes a nice presentation with the slightly larger pieces. With our carrots, you kind of cut them on the bias. And you want to be careful because it's not always a flat surface. So you're going to kind of get a uh, nice cut like that. We're gonna roast them with uh, extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper in a 350 degree oven. And um, again, kind of cook them a little bit al dente because they will continue to cook once they are in transport to uh, the locations we're gonna be delivering to. And then also a little red bell pepper um, just for some coloring. It's healthy, it's fresh. Um, you know, we try to do as many fresh sides as we can. We try to use local produce. It's a nice complement to a meal that has a little bit of starch from the pasta. Uh, nice complement to the meat sauce or marinara sauce. And it's a good vegetarian dish if you're gonna just have our marinara sauce along with the, uh, the vegetables. So it meets everybody's needs. Uh, the secret to a good garlic bread is, is having a good garlic butter, but the bread's also important. Uh, we have used a variety of breads through the years. Uh, we're very happy with this nice 12 inch baguette, has a nice firmness to it. And there are actually a variety of ways that you can cut it. We do it uh, two different ways. I'll show you both. One is kind of like, just like a garlic toast, basically cut it into like thirds, or we cut it into sticks, which is kind of how we used to do it at our old restaurant. Again, you want to be careful with the knife. It's always sharp. And these are just kind of smaller pieces, either the garlic toast or the garlic stick. They both taste fantastic, and you'll enjoy it with your wonderful pasta meal. We make our own garlic butter with uh, fresh garlic, basil, parsley, lemon juice, a little fresh red pepper. Uh, we prepare the bread, coat it with the, the garlic butter. Uh, we typically cook it um, for about 20 to 25 minutes in an oven at 350 degrees. Uh, some people like it a little crunchier, some people like it a little softer. So if you do like that crunchy texture, I would let it go maybe to 30 or 35 minutes. You want to make sure that your water is boiling, has some adequate salt and oil, and then you will pour your dry pasta in. And typically, cooking your pasta would probably be like the last thing that you want to do before you finish your meal preparation. So as the pasta is cooking, it starts to float a little bit more. The color starts to change. It uh, gets a little bit more translucent and white. Uh, Miguel pulled out a piece in order for us to kind of take a look at it and then taste it to make sure that the uh, texture is still al dente. If you don't, if you don't want to taste it because the pasta is hot, you can kind of squeeze it with your hand and it should just uh, not easily break, but break in half. And then you know the texture is correct. So uh, Miguel is pulling out our strainer with the penne. Once the uh, penne pasta is cooked, we pour it out on the sheet trays to drain as well as cool, because we want to try to keep our pasta al dente. Al dente is, a, uh, you want to keep your pasta a little bit firm 
because as you heat the sauces or put whatever application on that, it's gonna to continue to cook and you don't wanna overcook your pasta. So al dente means to the tooth, which means it's firm. It still has a little bit of a bite to it. We're just pan sauteing a little penne with meat sauce. Uh, see all the nice flavors gelling together and the great aromas. Uh, just getting ready to serve up a little lunch for everybody. We'd like you to like this video and remember to subscribe to the Urban Farming Education Channel. Hey, thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoy making the penne pasta with meat sauce as much as we enjoyed presenting it to you. See you next time.